Hello everyone, this is Jenny Hebert-Byrne again from Community Health Sciences and I welcome you to Module 5, Unit 1. This is Qualitative Data Analysis 1. Uh, the purpose of this unit, this beginning module, um, is to really just orient you to qualitative data analysis as a systematic way of analyzing your qualitative data. So I hope at the end of what I believe is 19 slides, uh, we accomplish these learning objectives. I hope to be able to help you distinguish quantitative data analysis from qualitative data analysis, to describe how codes can be used to group evidence and label ideas towards identifying themes, to describe what is and why qualitative data, computer-assisted qualitative data analysis software is useful. Uh, I hope that you'll be able to explain what is memoing and to describe how a theme emerges in qualitative data. So once we have the data, we have to figure out what to do. And just to remind you, we produce data typically in an interview and a focus group through the use of scripted guides that we use to produce new data, typically in the form of audio or textual data um, that we that we move from audio to verbatim text, uh, and then we want to analyze that data. So if this were numbers, this would be really easy, but because this is anything but numbers, we have to do some things in order to find meaning in the data. So first we organize the data, um, we clean it. This can uh, involve uh, transcribing the data you know, from one format that might be harder to analyze, like audio, to textual, and then removing things from the data that aren't relevant to the data analysis. In some cases, this can be uh, removing ums or some kind of nonverbal cues. Uh, in most qualitative data analysis, actually the ums and some of the nonverbal stuff is still very relevant to the analysis. But there might be all sorts of ways in which you might clean the data. You might reduce the evidence that, um, that risks loss of privacy to the research participants. So for example, if you had a focus group data and the individuals were talking about another person in their neighborhood, we would remove that person's name from the data. So you're basically cleaning it so that it's in a good state to analyze. And then there's two really important things I want you to learn in this unit. Uh, one is coding and memoing, because that's how we analyze data. Um, we code it uh, to organize the data, and we memo it to make analytical meaning, uh, analytic notes uh, on the coded uh, excerpts. And then we engage in analysis of the codes, and through that analysis of the codes, we identify themes. And I'm going to walk you through each of these stages. So overall, when we think about qualitative data analysis, what qualitative data analysis is, is a non-mathematical process of interpretation carried out so that we can discover concepts and relationships in our raw data and organize these into theoretical explanatory schemes. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify the, the themes within the data that are relevant to our research questions. And we have to somehow organize the data in order to do that. So we can do this um, if we were to move data from an audio version to textual version. Uh, we could actually have pages and pages of text and we could go through with a pen and some highlighters and start organizing the data. But uh, thankfully, we have um, qualitative data analysis software, which some people call Cactus, because there's lots of, of different kinds of software packages. There's Atlas TI, there's Max QDI. Uh, for, at School of Public Health, we tend to use Deduce, which is a web-based software. Uh, you don't have to use uh, computer-assisted qualitative data analysis software, but it makes your analytic steps, stages, uh, much easier. So one of the best ways to describe what is qualitative data analysis is to compare it to quantitative data analysis. So if we think about in quantitative data analysis, the symbolic summaries of meanings are used to describe the meaning within the data. So for example, in quantitative, we use numbers. Or we use percentages. We use 87%, 9 out of 10, 63 years old. These are symbolic summaries of meaning. 
In qualitative, we have to use language to provide those symbolic summaries. And that's really what codes are. They're language-based symbolic summaries of textual or visual data. Again, anything that's just not numerical. And we use words and phrases then rather than numbers to describe the data's meaning as interpreted by the, the analyst. Another way to describe qualitative data analysis is to compare it and contrast it to quantitative. So in this table that I adapted from Cresswell, uh, if, if you'll walk through the left-hand column of this table, when we think about engaging in quantitative data analysis, we think about moving from preparation of the data to exploration of the data to analysis of the data to representing or sharing the, the data, excuse me, representing and interpreting the data and validating the data. So in quantitative, we clean and we code and we develop a code book. We, we provide uh, descriptive analysis, descriptive statistics. We look at trends. What do we really have here? And then depending on our research question, we engage in analytic, uh, statistical tests of the data. Um, from these statistical tests, we can then present our results in uh, tables or in figures so we can use numbers and organize them visually to help people get a better sense of what the findings are. And then we interpret, so what does this mean? How do we explain the results? How do they speak back to the research question? Did we test, did we, uh, did we validate our hypothesis? Um, and then we actually can assess validity and reliability with other uh, statistical approaches. So in qualitative research, the stages are actually very similar. We move from preparation to exploration to analysis to representation to interpretation to validation. So um, what we do in qualitative is we clean and transcribe and organize the data. Um, in our exploration, we actually just spend a lot of time with the data. This can be reading it. This can be listening to it. This is memoing and developing a code book, becoming very familiar with our data. When we move into the analysis phase, we're really coding the data. We're looking for emergent themes by applying codes to the data to try to organize it. And I'll explain that in a second. The ways that we represent meaning in our analysis and qualitative uh, is really using narrative discussion of themes. We can use some visual models and some figures, but typically the qualitative data analysis findings are very text heavy. That can make them difficult to interpret. Um, we don't have a nice, clean table with a p-value. We have pages of narrative description. When we interpret the meaning, we explain how the findings relate back to the research question, like in quantitative, but we also can apply some personal meaning, some contextual understanding of the findings, which is what makes qualitative unique as we kind of embrace that context. Um, and then to validate the findings, and we'll have particular modules and units just on this, we engage in a lot of effort to uh, check the validity of our findings with the individuals from whom we took the data. So we call this member checking, so sharing back the, the findings. Does this make sense? Does this match your reality? That kind of thing. We can also engage in inner rater reliability, inner coder reliability, which would be a reliability test very similar to what you do in quantitative. Um, and that depends on the kind of qualitative data analysis that you're doing. Um, if, if in some cases, those kinds of tests aren't appropriate to the, your research question, it just varies, but they're definitely available to you. So I'm gonna get into some definitions uh, and, and just describe these three important things when we think about qualitative data analysis. So the first is codes, the second is memos, and the third is themes. So codes are really help us to categorize or mark segments of the data with short names. So in this case, I'd like you to think about our data being pages of text. So let's say you did an interview, you recorded the interview, you transcribed the interview. You transcribed your question, you transcribed the answer. Um, so a code is uh, a way for us to select or separate or sort out um, the data toward analytical accounting of them. And some Charmaz, I'll, I'll quote a lot in this unit, Kathy Charmaz writes about building an analytic skeleton of our data. We need a frame on which the analysis can be built. So the codes are words or sets of words that help us to look for patterns. And I'll, I'll provide a little bit more in-depth uh, description of that in a second. 
Memoing, on the other hand, is a process in which you stop and you capture your ideas about your codes, about some themes that you think are developing, any and every way that occurs to you in the moment. It's truly stopping and writing a note to oneself. And themes are the result of relationships across codes. These are patterns that emerge in some summary topic or category. So I'm not going to walk through all of these, but uh, in quality of data analysis, we use a set of, of terms that we use in qualitative data analysis. So I already defined a code. This is a word or a short series of words that describe meaning in the data. Um, coding is the process of assigning those codes. Uh, as you develop codes, you can develop a code book, just like in quantitative data analysis. So this lists your codes, your code definitions. You can also include your inclusion, exclusion criteria. Um, memoing, I'm just going to skip ahead, is this written analytic reflection that develops as part of the coding process. And memoing, as I said, is stopping and capturing your ideas as they develop. So a theme then is this overarching topic that's informed by the coding and memoing process. Uh, a thematic category can be a broader category under which several themes emerge. And these other terms will be described in subsequent units. So when we think about our step two analysis and qualitative data analysis, in unlike quantitative data analysis, our steps and our process is actually secular and it can evolve. So we transcribe and we clean our data, we memo our data, we develop a code book, we code, we memo some more, we analyze, and we can go back to memoing. Um, it, particularly when we have emerging themes from our analysis, we'll member check those themes and we'll actually have to go back to code and memo some more and start the process again. And that's uh, the best way to determine findings in qualitative is much more cyclical uh, moving forward and backward than in quantitative, which is linear and one way. So I'm going to talk explicitly about coding and then memoing and theme, theme development. So coding, again, is a process of grouping evidence and labeling ideas. And I, I draw from lots of different authors. Um, I'm pulling together these modules and these units because there's a lot of diversity in qualitative research. Um, so Cresswell talks about this process of grouping and labeling. Saldana talks about coding as having a repertoire of coding approaches or methods. So depending on your research question, depending on your data, you might use different kinds of coding. Um, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, Strauss and Corbin, which are, um, who are much more rigid in their coding, uh, describe coding as reducing the data, conceptualizing reducing the data to elaborate categories and pro properties and dimensions of those categories. And in doing so, we're trying to uh, reduce down the data to identify what really matters, what are the overarching themes that, that emerge out of this. Saldana talks about a code most often being a word or a short phrase that symbolically assigns a summative, salient, essence capturing, and or evocative attribute for a portion of language-based or visual data. And again, their language-based or visuals discerning it from numerical data. And we're basically trying to capture an attribute of the data. Coding, Sharmaz emphasizes, um, can happen at any time in the analysis process, and it builds a discussion that convinces the reader that a theme or a category actually came from the data. So coding is a process that keeps us close to the data and allows uh, evidence of our pattern, of our process, um, from the raw data to the thematic categories. Um, there's lots of different approaches to coding, but what I typically uh, see is that is that qualitative data analysts typically have kind of two stages at a minimum of coding. The first is kind of initial, what do we have here? And the second is much more focused. I tend to use a lot of Charmaz's approach, approaches with this initial and focused, but Strauss and Corbin and Saldana use this kind of first shot, second shot um, ap approach to coding. That allows a deeper dive the second uh, time around. So it's often staged, but it can move back and forth. And again, it, it's building towards theme identification or in, or in some cases theory development, depending on the, the kind of analysis that you're doing. 
So when we think about this initial and focused, initial codes generally are more descriptive in nature. They flag content that is of interest, whereas focused coding well, is more theoretical and more substant sub substantive. So focused codes are typically identified through that memoing and coding process. You have a second layer of codes that are more focused. Um, two other kinds of codes I use a lot. One is called great quotes. Um, and this really is just a code that allows you to identify a selection of text that captures the essence of something just so and you want to use it uh, later um, in your uh, representation of the findings. I mean, in vivo code, uh, similarly, is um, using language from the participants themselves as a code. So the language that someone might use that you think uh, is perfectly suited to a code. A code can be anything that you want it to be. It even could be numerical if you could keep that straight in your head. Um, there are, we, we then want to look for code patterns. So when we look across our codes, can we find evidence of similarity or differences? Can we look at code frequency? Co code frequency um, can be actually really helpful. How often did I use one code over another? What does that mean here? Uh, codes can allow us to, to look at sequences of things. We can look at what code tends to occur before another code in a set of data, and that can inform us on sequences. Codes can allow us to look at correspondences. Do things happen in relation to other activities? And codes can give us some sense on causation. Qual quality of data analysis is not good at causation, but it can provide some insights as to how ca uh, causation uh, may play out in this particular scenario. Uh, when we code, uh, a lot of people, including Sharmaz, uh, encourage analysts to become involved in the data, to learn from the data, to engage in what she calls theoretical playfulness, uh, kind of moving with the data. What do I have here? Does, does this make sense? What am I hearing? Um, the coding can help us move from concrete events and discussions to more theoretical insight. It can uh, allow us to ask questions and to make comparisons within the data. As I said before, it can occur throughout the process. Um, some people suggest when you're reading your, your uh, transcript, um, if something moves, you code it. So when something kind of draw, is drawn to you, uh, it's important to code. Not everything gets coded. Uh, it, it really kind of jumps out of the data. And this comes from practice. Um, the last thing is, Sharmanas talks about gerund coding. This is coding that involves words with an ing. Uh, she does this when she engages in grounded theory um, approaches to her quality of data analysis, where she's looking for a process or an experience. She uses ing codes to kind of capture what is happening here. I think that can kind of be a helpful way to think about coding. So memoing um, is related to coding. Uh, as you're coding your data, um, we encourage people to write memos. Memos are notes to oneself that you make um, that allow you to stop and capture your ideas at any and every way that occurs to you in the moment that you're becoming familiar with the data, then you're coding. It keeps you involved in the analytic process, and it helps you consider and record what's happening. So what's going on here? What are people saying? What are they, what is this person doing? What connections can you make here? And you don't have to worry about your memos being um, so perfect. They're really just trying to capture your evolving uh, thought and your um, insights. Memos can help you make comparisons between uh, one interview and another, for example, one interview and a, a code or a set of codes, or a code to another code. So uh, how well are your codes making sense? You might memo that uh, this code isn't really capturing what I thought I was going to find in this data. I need a new code. Uh, you can, as you memo, you can bring in other kinds of data um, to the analysis. So to kind of compare, have I heard this before? Is this something uh, that is new to this data or um, has it been found in other kinds of data? Um, that's a pretty advanced uh, kind of memo type, but you can do that kind of memo type. The memos can help you identify gaps or limitations to your analysis, maybe in the quality of the data, some kind of problem that you see in the data, uh, something is missing or something is, is um, 
maybe, for example, the interviewer um, was probing and kind of pushing the interview too much in one direction, you might memo about that to kind of control for or flag for some concerns for quality of data. And when you're coding with other coders, which is very um, important in some kinds of qualitative research, it can raise awareness for issues for other coders. So coding and memoing allow us to move towards theme development. So in qualitative data analysis, there are all sorts of ways in which you can approach your data. Uh, and we encourage, and, and units that follow this will explicitly describe uh, theoretical lenses that you use to do your qualitative data analysis. And it's important to have a theoretical lens to name, I am engaging in analysis of this data towards answering this question with this particular paradigm, with this particular worldview in mind. And that allows us to identify insights in the data that answer our research question. So again, these are in subsequent units and modules, but I wanted to describe what they are because coding and memoing allow us to identify themes. In some cases, if you're doing thematic analysis, which is a particular kind, a particular approach to data analysis, your outcome is going to be theme development. These are the themes that emerged out of my data. Um, if your analytic approach is grounded theory, you're actually looking to build theory in the data. So your outcome is going to be uh, theory. There are going to be themes that emerge from uh, the data, but that will lead you to being able to identify new theory. Um, so for our purposes at this initial stage, we want to think about a theme as the outcome of our coding, of our categorization, our making of a skeleton of the data, and our analytic reflection in our memos. We can have an, uh, one overarching theme with, with smaller sub-themes, that's very common. Um, we can have uh, three themes with cross-cutting uh, theme. That's also a very common thing that you see in qualitative data analysis. But they are the new insight, the meaning that you've made through your coding and your memoing process. I included some of the key references I used in talking about qualitative data analysis. And this concludes the unit. And um, please have fun with the, the quiz. Thank you. <laughs>